So this is how we're going to do the pivot standing waves lab. This is from our Pear Deck notes, so I'm going to go through that and show you the pivot so that you can work on this more independently on your own without necessarily having me or Mr. Scott in the classroom with you. So it says, how can I design a lab to determine relationships of velocity, wavelength, and frequency of standing waves and draw conclusions based on its data? So we're going to be using some equations that we've learned already. Um, mostly apply the relationship between velocity wavelength and wave velocity using standing waves using this equation. We've seen this equation before in the reference table, except we've seen it as velocity equals frequency times wavelength. They've just rewrote it like this. And then the other part is we're going to apply two new equations that we haven't learned and are not in your reference table. And so that has to do with wave speed, tension, and linear density for transverse waves in a spring or in a rope or cord. Um, so the next slide really shows us this. Um, so wave speed due to tension and linear mass density. So wave speed is velocity here equals the square root of the force on the string. So use the mass on the string and you're going to convert that to force due to tension. So we're going to use an equation from earlier in the year, mostly that force equals mass times gravity. Um, divided by of the string. And so to break this down further, we have this equation where linear density is mass divided by total length of the string. And when I say total length of the string, I mean the total length of the string, including the vertical part that is hanging. But we'll get to that in a moment. This is what our pivot simulation looks like. We had a do now question in this very uh, pear deck that helped us figure that out. So we're going to have frequency, which is changing here from the wave generator, so we can watch the frequency changing. Frequency is the independent variable, so as frequency changes, we're going to see a change in the wavelength here. So frequency is our x variable because it's independent, and wavelength is our y variable because it is the dependent variable. So as the frequency goes up, we'll see changes in the wavelength and take measurements based on that. Uh, so I guess I can go to the pivot to over the objective. So here is a video wave generator creating different waves with different wavelengths as the frequency goes up. So here it goes. And we can see that there's one standing wave there. And then we can see it's going to create another standing wave like that with two anti notes. And then as the frequency continues to go up, which we're seeing here, there's three anti nodes, and it's going to keep going up. And then four anti nodes. And then it's going to show five anti nodes. And then finally it's going to go up to six anti nodes. There we go. So it's kind of hard to see, but you can see it there. So what we're going to do is we are going to make a table. So first it says, which string and weight did you select for this experiment? For this one, I'm using cord number one and hanging weight of 100 grams. That becomes important for us later. So you just want to make sure you fill out the correct information here so that if you have to save and come back, you know where you left off. So we're going to make our table with frequency on the X, and that's going to be in Hertz with frequency of F and then wavelength, which I'm going to measure in meters. And to get the thing, to get it, let's, let's push play back at the beginning, let's say. And so this is about where it is doing its one full standing wave right around here. So I said it was about 16.1, so you can see the hertz here. 16.1, but this is only creating one anti-node. So that's not a full wavelength, right? Because we need two anti-nodes to create one full wavelength. So I measured the distance from zero to about 99 centimeters. And then I doubled that because it's, it's this part plus the other part that we can't see because the string's not long enough. So that gave me a total wavelength of like 1.98 meters. Then if I go up to about like what, 32.2, we see here that we have two antinodes. This is a full complete wave. So that's around like 99 centimeters or 0.99 meters. And I'm gonna keep mine in meters because it's gonna keep the math easier for us in my opinion. 
So I went ahead and already did the measurements and put them in the table here, um, but you should do your own measurements. And like I said, frequency is the independent variable, so we're gonna put that on the x-axis. And wavelength was the dependent variable, so I'm gonna put that on the y-axis. So you, we can see here it kind of creates a downward when you make the scatter plot, it should follow one of these types of relationships. It's either going to be linear direct, linear indirect, or no line, no relationship, a horizontal line, quadratic, a square root, or a 1 over x relationship. So if we go back and look at the graph it created, it's kind of this downward curve. I'm going to try, um, I can try a linear fit just to see. Okay, so that doesn't fit it the best, right? Like it's missing a lot of the points. But I could also try the 1 over x inverse, and notice how that's much cleaner, right? That's a much cleaner curve to match our data for this. So if this is going to be 1 over x, if that's the relationship this is, if it's this relationship here, um, if we're going to linearize our graph, and this is a great link, I love this link for linearizing. Again, you can find this in the Pear Deck. Um, so if it's a 1 over x form or like even a 1 over x squared, it's going to look like this type of curve. So what you're going to do is you're going to make a new column, calculated column, with the x-axis variable as 1 over x. So our x, our x value on the x-axis is frequency, and if we want it to look like this, we're going to have to do 1 over frequency. So I'm going to come back up here, I'm going to add a column to the right, I'm going to call it 1 over frequency. Um, so my units are going to be 1 over hertz, because that was the, the unit for frequency. Going to change my column formula to be 1 divided by frequency. Going to hit submit, does the calculation for us, makes it nice and neat. And then I'm going to change this to be 1 over frequency for my graph. And now you can see that this curve no longer fits because we linearized it. So I'm going to go back to a linear curve fit, just like that. Ta-da, it's linearized, and now we can see our slope, which is 31.9 meters over 1 over hertz. Um, analysis, 1 over hertz is actually the same thing as seconds, so this becomes meters per second. So this is velocity. So this number right here is the velocity for um, this setup. So I'm going to go back to this. So we linearized it. We looked at the slope to find velocity. Now we need to use the wave in the wave speed tension linear density equation to solve for linear density. So to do that, I have that on the next slide right here. All right, so how to solve for linear density. We're gonna use this equation. We know the velocity because we found that from our linearized slope. There it is. Um, but the force we don't know, so we need to find the tension in the force. So what I mean by that is we're looking to solve this tension right here. So we know the hanging weight is 100 grams, so we're going to use that force equation, mass times gravity, to give us the force and the tension of the rope. So 100 grams converts to 0 0.1 kilograms. Um, gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared. We're going to multiply those two numbers together and get our force of 0 0.981 newtons for this specific example. If you use a different example, your mass might be different and you'll get a different number. Um, but then we substitute it into this equation, and I know it's hard to see because it's hard to put the square root in, but we have 31.9 meters per second, which is my velocity, equals the square root of my force divided by mu. And when I solve for mu, and I just did a bunch of algebra, this is an algebra step, write it out on a piece of paper, solve for mu, get it nice and clean, and then you'll get some really small number in kilograms per meters. And you do want a really small number for this because the mass of the string is not very big, it's a piece of string. But that's just the linear mass density, that's not the mass, and it's asking for the mass. So you're gonna use that second equation, which is mu equals mass divided by length, which is the total length. So m is what we want, that's what we're solving for. L is the total length of the rope, including the vertical part. So again, if I go back to my simulation, I'm gonna to need to use this vertical measuring tool to figure out roughly what my distance is. So this is about one meter plus like 4.43-ish um, for my length of the rope, so I put 1.43 meters. Then we take my number from before, our mu value, linear mass, 
equals mass divided by 1.43 meters. Solve for that, I get this in kilograms, convert that to grams, and I get about 1.38 grams, which makes sense because it's a rope and a cord and it's not gonna have a huge mass. 1.38 um, grams is not a very big amount of matter, so it's quite light, which is reasonable for this one. So that's how we do the whole setup from the very beginning to the very end. And you're gonna do a few different experiments. So experiment one, you're gonna pick different ones, experiment two, experiment three, and then experiment four, which is the mystery mass, is using chord four, I mean, sorry, chord three. So I recommend for one of your experiments, you do at least one chord three. Um, so like I said, I did chord one and 100 grams, but you can also switch it to be chord three and use one of these to solve for that because you'll need that mu value to do your mystery mass. Um, so just a, a helpful hint, pick one of them at least to have chord three because you can use that value later in your setup. Okay, well I hope that helps you do your standing wave lab. You know, always go back and like listen to another part of it if it wasn't totally clear and you can of course always email me. All right, that's all, bye.